Welcome to Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. Your day weather podcast is being brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com. Also being brought to you by YDOT. When there's ice and snow, take it slow. There's a lot going to be happening in the long term, but in the short term, average early December weather is what we're going to have through Saturday. We're going to see a small weather system come across the region tonight and Thursday. This will bring snow to Colorado's mountains especially and into the southern mountains of Wyoming, mountains of Utah. There's going to be a little bit of snow shower activity across the plains and some gusty winds. It's a small system as it crosses the Rockies, but it will produce a little bit of snow out into parts of the Corn Belt and the Midwest, and we'll show you that. So travelers heading eastbound tomorrow, you're going to want to watch that. There's not going to be much going on Friday and Saturday, but we're still looking at the possibility of a high impact storm system across the region and across a large part of the central and western United States next week. We want to give a heads up to livestock interests and travelers. You got to watch the storm carefully. We're getting a little more confident that a high impact storm is going to develop, but we, of course, this far out can't give you many details other than to tell you what we see is lending to a good chance of an impactful storm, a winter storm, and we'll show you where we think the general area is going to be. As we get closer to the event, we'll be able to fine tune details a little bit, but we'll show you what we have so far. Now, we had some photos roll in from all over the place, a lot of photos on social media of this unique cloud formation that showed up over and near the Bighorn Mountains near Sheridan yesterday just fabulous photos and uh, this is called a kelvin hemholtz wave cloud now you don't see these very often these are are pretty rare i wouldn't call them extremely rare but they don't happen very often as you have to have kind of the perfect situation to see them but boy they were really wonderful clouds over the northern parts of wyoming yesterday and you can see it looks like waves doesn't it? it looks like an ocean wave and there's good reason for that if you think about how an ocean wave forms with the wind over the water. Well, it's a similar situation. Anybody who's taken fluid dynamics, the Kelvin Helmholtz wave may sound familiar to you. And it occurs when you get these strong vertical wind shears between two layers. And the mountains are also a little bit of a factor. They don't have to form over near mountains, but you tend to see more of them. And uh, this gives you a good graphic here of showing you where the stronger winds aloft are causing a shear layer between two layers of wind. And if the moisture conditions and the wind conditions, especially the wind direction, where the mountain barrier is just right, this is how you end up forming this. And this is the same way you get waves over water. You get strong winds over the water, you get a different layer of shear, and you get this formation. So thanks for sending in those photos. And uh, boy, uh, a rare event, great that a lot of folks were able to observe it. And there you can see up here, this is about the 10,000 foot wind layer. And the winds aloft were coming from the west northwest over the big horns at just the right speed to cause those shear layers yesterday. Now getting into the forecast segment of our forecast, here we have the upper low, a small one over and near Las Vegas that's going to be heading this way tonight and into Thursday morning. As it moves through, what it will do is it'll be by tomorrow noon, about over Cheyenne and Fort Collins, then heading right down Interstate 80 this way. And the end result is this. We're going to see a patch of moisture with showers, mountain snow developing in this area right here with this wave as it comes on through. A little more light snow for Montana and the Dakotas up in that Arctic air and then more onshore moisture for the Pacific Northwest. So this is not gonna be a really big weather maker, but notice as it heads Northeast, it is gonna end up being a little bit more productive here in Eastern Nebraska and over into Iowa. There you can see the snow that is forecasted to fall through about 5 p.m. on Thursday. So across parts of Wyoming, Western Colorado, the mountains of Colorado, Utah, Western Wyoming, then up there you're gonna see some uh, snow with this system. And then you can see as it goes further east, this is, you can use I-80 kind of as the dividing line. There's going to be snow along and north of Interstate 80, south of Interstate 80, it's going to be rain. So if you can travel I-80, 
central and eastern Nebraska into Iowa into the Midwest as we get into Thursday and Thursday night and Friday morning. You need to watch for that system. Then we've got this next storm system that's going to give us concern for early next week. We have a large low, a cold area of low pressure coming into California and the Pacific Northwest during the weekend. So there's going to be widespread rain and mountain snows for Washington, Oregon, California, into parts of the Great Basin by Sunday evening. Now earlier in a podcast, I think we talked about this late last week, when you get these blocking patterns up in Greenland and over the Eastern Pacific, low pressure systems can break off from the main jet stream and then take a further southerly route and then become intense storms. We have seen this in similar situations and this is why we were a little concerned last week that the pattern was gonna get more busy with larger storm potential. And as we watch this system come into the Great Basin late Sunday, by Monday into Tuesday, it jumps over the divide and we have a mature, stronger storm taking shape over parts of Eastern Colorado and Western Kansas by late Monday into Tuesday. What you see is it starts to get pinched off from the main flow. Here's the main jet stream. So basically it gets cut off. When you cut off a low from the main jet stream, it's gonna slow down. And if conditions are right, it could really intensify. And we have a strong jet stream wind coming over the Continental Divide, gives us what we call a lee side low situation where strong winds over mountain barrier causes pattern to develop that can intensify low pressure systems east of the divide. And then look how slowly this system moves. So this is Monday night. This is by Tuesday evening. So it is not moving very far. And this is by Thursday morning. So it is going to take its time and it really intensifies Tuesday. That is an intense storm. It is cut off from the main flow. And what will happen is you'll have warm, moist air getting pushed up ahead of it. So you're gonna have severe weather down here. You're gonna have Arctic air get pulled in behind the system and you're gonna have a lot of wind. And the end result with a slow moving, intense storm system across the plains, this is where we're, we're concerned. Again, don't, buy into too much of what I'm showing you here because the track of this system could certainly shift. But the area of, of concern when it comes to winter storm conditions is definitely going to be in this area right here where you could have the combination of very cold temperatures, snow and wind all come together. And this is going to mainly be some time between Monday through Wednesday, maybe even into early Thursday, if this storm comes together. And we're starting to see better and better model agreement. And you can also see the very heavy precipitation as the storm hits the West Coast for the Western areas of the United States and into the Great Basin as well. And look at the snow cover forecast over the next 10 days. So you can see along and north of the track of the storm as it heads into the Midwest, we have this swath of heavier snow cold and wind. Again, the exact track is going to still yet to be determined. Look at these wind gusts potential with this storm as we get into the early parts of next week. So when you put it all together, this could be a very impactful storm for travel, especially for folks in the livestock industry, as uh, it's one of these high plains, Rocky Mountain storm systems that sometimes we see this time of year. Quickly, I want to give you a quick La Nina, El Nino update. We did get the new sea surface temperature forecast in earlier this week that takes us out through spring and into early summer from the European model. So the sea surface temperature anomaly still showing La Nina here through the rest of this month. This is January. It begins to fade. This is February. It's really fading. By March, we have a little swath of warmer sea surface temperatures there. April, May, and June. So we're continuing to see the trend of the La Nina fading away. So our confidence of La Nina going away continues to get stronger. And the latest data, data sets suggest that. So have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll talk more about next week's storm as we get closer. Have yourself a good day.